All right, so let's do a VSEPR example. So we want to determine the molecular geometry for selenium fluoride. And remember that when we want to figure out the molecular geometry of a molecule, we need to start by drawing the Lewis structure. Because once we draw the Lewis structure, we can then figure out the steric number for the molecule. And from the steric number, we're going to be able to determine which basic geometry that we're working from. After that, we'll be able to name the structure and also determine the bond angles. So let's start by drawing the Lewis structure for selenium fluoride. And the first thing we want to do, of course, is add up the valence electrons for this structure. Okay, so for this molecule, I should say. And so we have selenium down here below oxygen, so six valence electrons for selenium, and fluorine, group seven, main group seven, two times seven valence electrons for fluorine, and we're going to end up with 20 valence electrons overall. Okay, so now let's go ahead and string the molecule together. So selenium is the central atom, and I'm, so I'm going to bond fluorine on each side, okay? Now think to yourself, how many electrons have we used so far? So we have 20 to work with, and we've used four because we have two single bonds, so two, four. So let's distribute the rest of them to the outer atoms first. So two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, 16, okay, and we still have four left over, so I'm going to put those on the central atom. Okay, so now you can see why it's so important to count up those valence electrons, because if I hadn't done that, I might have thought that I was finished distributing electrons after I completed octets on fluorine, on both fluorines. Now, of course, selenium still wouldn't have had an octet, so then I might have made a double bond, but see, I would have been going down the wrong path. So, because we have 20 valence electrons, we want to make sure they're all distributed, and so we end up with two lone pairs on selenium. All right, so what's the steric number for selenium, then? Because we want to look at the steric number for the central atom, and the steric number is four, right? Because we have two lone pairs, and we have two bonded atoms. So overall, the steric number is 4. And so our basic geometry is tetrahedral, right? Okay. All right, so we have basic geometry, tetrahedral, and let's go ahead and draw that. Okay. And so kind of modeling off of what is on your VSCPR chart. I'm going to put a lone pair here, and I'm going to put a lone pair here. And so remember, this hashed line, that means it's going back. This bold wedge coming out at you. And then the fluorines are on each side. And remember, on a VSCPR structure, on a molecular geometry structure, we don't need to show the lone pairs on fluorine anymore. So we just needed those in order to figure out if we had any lone pairs on the central atom. Okay, so now basically what I've done is drawn the geometry. Okay, so what shape is that? All right, so if you said bent, you're right. Okay, so that's the name of the shape. And what is this bond angle? So what is the bond angle for the basic geometry in a t for a tetrahedral molecule? For a basic geometry, it would be 109.5 degrees, okay? But for us, we have two lone pairs on the selenium, and remember, lone pairs have sharp elbows, so they're going to squeeze those two fluorines closer together, and so we're just going to say that it's less than 109.5 degrees, okay? With two much less, two lone pairs, so it's squeezed together even more than it would be with one lone pair on the central atom.